In this video we're going to explore middleware in Django applications. Now middleware in Django provides hooks into the framework's request response processing cycle. And when a request comes into Django it goes through all of the middleware that's defined before it hits the view function and similarly it goes back through that stack of middleware before returning a response to the client. We're going to explore this concept in the video and we're going to see how we can write our own middleware. And as an example of that, in this video we're going to define a middleware that allows us to blacklist certain IP addresses from accessing our Django application. And as well as the middleware itself, we'll write some tests for the logic that's performed by that middleware. And after we've done that, we'll write a second middleware that's going to allow us to replicate some of the functionality of the popular Django HTMX package. Now if you're enjoying this content, give it a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the channel for much more Django, Python and related content. So let's get started. Now before we get started, I did a video on creating a Django middleware for logging and that was for the Better Stack channel where I'm currently creating some videos. So it's the one here at the top left, the Django middleware video. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description, you can check that out and it would be amazing if you would subscribe to this channel. We're going to have much more content on this channel about Django, Python and other programming languages. Now let's go to the Django documentation on middleware. Now what middleware is, is it's a framework of hooks into Django's request response processing. And this is a plugin system for globally altering Django's input and output. And each middleware component is responsible for doing some specific function. And as an example, Django includes a middleware called the authentication middleware. And what that does is it associates users with requests using sessions. Now in a second, we're gonna see how to write our own middleware. But I want to quickly look at a diagram from an older version of the Django documentation and it's this one here below and this diagram shows the flow as a request comes into the Django application and what the middleware does to that request. Now you can see on the left hand side we have an HTTP request coming into Django and what that does is it goes through each of the middleware that are configured in your Django middleware setting and it will go through those one at a time. So the one at the top here, the common middleware, it will start there and it will be passed down to all of the other middleware in the Django application. And finally, after the last middleware, that's gonna send the request onto the Django view function. And the view function in Django, that's where you define the logic for your URLs. After that, what's gonna happen is the view function is gonna return some kind of response. And that response is gonna be passed up through the chain of middleware until finally it's sent back to the client. So that's the diagram. And we're gonna see an example of that flow as we progress through this video. Now let's go down to the section on writing our own middleware. We're gonna have a look at this and the two ways that you can do this. First of all, it can be written as a function and that function will return another function that's defined within it. What we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna look at the class-based definition. So you define a class that contains two methods. First of all, we have the dunder init method and what's passed in by Django to this is a callable called getResponse. And typically in the dunder init method, we store that as an instance variable on the middleware class. And then there is also a dunder call method. And this is the most important method in the middleware. This is what executes the logic before the request goes to the Django view and also after that view returns a response, but before that response is sent to the client. So in the middle of this dunder call method, we are getting a response by calling that callable called get response. And you can see the dunder call method has access to the incoming request object that's passed into the get response function. And we get back a response here and that is ultimately what's returned by the middleware. But what is the actual purpose of the middleware? So before we call get response, what we can do is we can actually modify the request in any way that we want before that request is passed to the Django view. Now, as an example of that, the authentication middleware, and that's one that's built into Django, what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the request and it's gonna define whether or not an authenticated user is sending that request by looking at the Django session information. And it's gonna create a property on the request, and that's the request.user property. And you use that very commonly in your Django views, but that .user property is actually added by the authentication middleware. So what that's doing is it's modifying the request object, and that's something you can do before the request goes to your Django view. And then after you've returned a response from the view, you can define middleware that can modify that response before it's sent back to the client. An example of that might be to add an HTTP header to the response. And after you've performed your custom logic, you just return the response and it's sent either to the next middleware in the chain or it's sent to the client. 
Now what I'm going to do is open up a Django project in VS Code and I have one open here and what we're going to do to start with is go to the Django settings.py file and we're going to see where Django defines the middleware that you're using in an application. So in settings.py we can scroll down and just below installed apps we have a setting here called middleware and we can see that this is a Python list and each element in that list points to a middleware class. For example, Django's security middleware, there's the session middleware as well, and so on. The one mentioned in the documentation is this one, it's the authentication middleware, and that uses the session object that's added by the session middleware to the request in order to find out whether the user sending the request is authenticated. Now what we're going to do in this video is we're going to see how to write our own middleware, and we're going to add those middleware classes that we write to this list of middleware. Now if you're interested in any videos on what these individual middleware classes do, let me know in the comments. Comments. But let's now move on to writing our own middleware and to do that I'm going to create a folder in this project or rather in the core application of the project and that folder is called middleware and we're going to create a new file in that folder. Now I'm going to call this file ipblacklist.py and this middleware class that we're going to write, let's say that we want to block a list of IP addresses from being able to access our Django application. What we're going to do is we're going to write a middleware here that checks the IP address of the incoming request and if that IP address is part of a blacklist we're going to raise a permission denied exception. So let's start by sketching out the class. We're going to create a class here and we're going to call that IP blacklist middleware and we can define those two methods that the middleware class expects. First of all we have the dunder init constructor and that takes as I said a get response callable and we're going to cache that on the class. We're going to store it as an instance variable by setting self.getResponse equal to that parameter. Once we've done that, we can define a dunder call method. And again, that's an instance method, so it takes self, and it's also going to take the Django request as a parameter. And these are automatically injected, these parameters, by Django when you add a middleware to this list of settings. Now what we want to do is we want to check if the IP address that's coming in in this request is part of this blacklist. But we need to define the blacklist somewhere. And what we're going to do to keep things simple is just define that in the settings.py file. So let's say we're writing some custom third-party Django application and that expects to see a setting of banned IPs. And that again will be a Python list. And what I'm going to do is set this to just the localhost IP address. And we're going to save the settings.py file and go back to our middleware. Now we need to reference that setting. So what we're going to do is import Django's settings. So at the top, I'm going to import the settings from django.conf. And we're also going to import an exception. So from django.core.exceptions, we're going to import the permission denied exception. Now in the dunder call method, what we need to do is check whether the user who's defining the application has set this setting here called banned IPs. So let's go back to the middleware and we're going to check using the has attribute function, which is built into Python, whether the settings that we've imported has a key called banned IPs. And we're also going to check if that setting is not none, if we do indeed have that setting. So basically all we're doing here is we're checking whether the developer has set the setting called banned IPs. And if they have, we're going to make sure that the value of that setting is not none. So this if block will only be executed if we have some banned IPs in this project. I'm going to add a comment here. What we're going to do now is check the incoming request IP address and make sure that it's not in the banned IPs. And actually, let me remove the not comment here. We're gonna check if the incoming IP address is in the banned IPs. So let's do that now. We're gonna look at Django's request.meta, and that is a dictionary containing metadata about the incoming request. And one of the fields, one of the keys in that dictionary is a key called remote address. And this is the most simple way to check the IP address of the incoming request. And as a side note, if you're using something like a load balancer in front of your Django applications, you might want to look for other headers here. But we'll keep it simple for now. We're gonna check if that IP address is in the banned IPs that have been set in the Django settings module. And if that's the case, we know that the user that's sending this request is part of the banned IP addresses. And what we're gonna do is just raise the permission denied exception. Now, what if the if statement does not evaluate to true here? So if we don't have a setting called banned IDs, or if we do have that setting, but the remote address is not part of those banned IPs, we just need to return the response. And in order to do that, we can create the response by calling self.getResponse, and we can pass the request into that, and then just return that response. So that's the middleware class. We now need to add this IP blacklist middleware 
to the Django middleware setting. So let's go back to settings.py and go to the middleware list here. And at the bottom of that, we're going to reference the path to that middleware. And it's in the core application. And then we had a middleware directory and a file called IP blacklist. And in that file, we just need to reference the name of our middleware class. And we called the class IP blacklist middleware. So let's save the settings.py file and we're going to start the Django development server. And I'm going to go to the browser. And you can see that when we navigate to the page, we get the 403 forbidden response. We are not allowed to access this page. And the reason for that is that when we send a request to that URL, we can look at the view, which is very simple. It just returns a template here. But the point here is that because of our middleware class, we never reach the view function. And that's because when the request comes into this middleware, we are checking the IP address and we are finding that the remote address that's in the request.meta property, that address is part of the list that we have here in the settings.band IPs. So if we go back to that, this is the incoming IP address and it matches one of the IPs that we have in this band list. And because of that, our request will then go to this section and raise the permission denied exception. And we never actually pass this request into our Django view in order to generate the response. And this is the thing about middleware. A middleware is applied to every single request that comes into your Django application. So if you need to consolidate some logic that applies to every single request or every single response, you can do that using a middleware. And that's what this is doing here. Now, if we go back to settings.py and if I commented this out, what's going to happen if we go back to the page is that we're going to get the default page here. And that's just a very basic template in Django, but a request is not raising that permission denied because our IP address is no longer in that setting. Now, if we go back to settings.py here, one thing to mention in a real application is that you might want to outsource the band IPs, for example, to the database. So you can create a blacklist table in the database that stores all of the blacklisted IP addresses. And then you can have a Django model that pulls that information in the middleware and it can check whether or not the incoming request is part of that blacklist. And that would be easier to manage because any administrator could go into the Django admin UI and then add new IP addresses to the blacklist. It's a little harder to manage directly from the code here in the settings.py file. So that's just a thought about how you might extend this into something more useful. Now what I want to do is write some tests for this middleware that we've defined in Django. And I believe this is the first time on this channel that I've written tests, but we're going to write a lot more of those in the near future. Now what we have in a Django project by default is a tests.py file in each application. And at the top from Django.test, we've imported the test case class and we can create a subclass of this and write our tests as methods in that subclass. So let's do that just now. We're going to create a class and I'm going to call it IP blacklist middleware test. Quite a long name, but it's going to do it for this example. And that's going to inherit from the test case class in Django. Now what we're going to do is we're going to define a setup method. And what that does is sets up the class for testing with any instance variables that you want to define. So you can perform setup and configuration in this setup method. And what we're going to do is we're going to store a client on the class as an instance variable. And we're going to set this to an instance of the Django test client. Now we need to import that at the top. So I'm going to copy this line of code. And what we're going to import here is from django.test.client. We'll import that client class. And we can now start writing methods in the class. And these methods are going to test some of the logic that we've got here in the middleware. So let's go back to tests.py. And when you write a test in Django, your method should start with test. And it's quite common that these test methods are quite long. So I'm going to give this one a pretty descriptive name here. We're going to test that the request is successful without the blacklist setting. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a response and we're going to use the self.client that we stored on the class. And we're going to send a get request to the root URL of this application. And that gives us back a response and we can use Django's test class here. And that has a method called assert equal. And we're going to assert that the response that we get back, which has a status code, is equal to a particular status. Now we want to make sure that it's equal to the status of 200, which means OK. And that's because when we send the request to Django, we want to test what happens when we don't have this band IPs setting. And we expect to get back a response because when we don't have band IPs, that means we're not going to raise that permission denied error. So let's go back to tests.py. And there's a couple of things we need to do here. Now, the first one is we don't want to refer to these magic numbers here for HTTP response codes. So at the top, I'm going to bring in an import from the Python standard library. And that's from the HTTP module. We're going to import 
the HTTP status object. And then instead of 200, we can use that object, and that's basically an enum in Python. And it has a field for all of the different HTTP status codes. And the one that we're looking at here is HTTP status dot OK, which means the 200 response code. So we want to check that the response status code is equal to HTTP status dot OK. And the other thing we need to do here is we don't want to rely on the settings that are configured in settings.py. We need to test different variations of the application. And what we need to do in order to do that is override that setting. Now let's go to the Django documentation here. And it's this function here, override settings. So if you need to override a setting for a test method, Django provides this decorator that you can use on methods in the test class. And here's an example of this. We have override settings used as a decorator and we're resetting the login URL for this test to this particular path. And this is something that we need to do in order to test different variations of the band IP's setting. We don't want to rely on whatever the developer has in the application at a given time for our tests. So let's bring in the import of this override settings function. And that comes from the Django.test package, the same one that we import the test case from. So let's go back to tests.py. We're going to bring that import in and we're going to use that now on our method here. Now this override settings decorator, we can pass the overrides that we want into that. So we're going to test this with band IPs set to none. And the reason for that is because we are testing this request without the blacklist setting, without the band IPs. So we're just going to set that to none. And finally, we're going to actually run this test. So I'm going to stop the Django server here and we're going to run python manage.py test in order to run this test. And you can see from the response here that we have run that one test and everything has run OK. Our test has successfully passed. And now we can write some more tests in order to test different variations of this. Now we're going to do this quickly. What I'm going to do is copy the existing class or the existing method, sorry. And we're going to change the band IPs here. And let's set this to something else. I'm going to set it to 192.168.1.2, just a random IP address. And that is now the setting for our band IPs. And I'm going to rename this function. So it's now going to be test that the request is successful with a non blacklisted IP. And what we want to do here is make sure that when we send a request to Django and we have an IP address that does not match the one that's in the band IPs, we want to make sure that we get back an OK response for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to override the remote address that's passed into the client.get method here. And I'm going to set that to something that is different from what we passed in here to the band IPs. And because the client's IP address is not in the band IPs, we expect to get back the OK response. So let's save this and go back to the terminal. And we're going to rerun the test command. And hopefully we're going to see that we've run two tests and that all is OK. And we need to write one more test to actually check whether if we have a band IP address in the request, that it returns a different response. And that's the permission denied 403 response. So again, let's copy this method here. I'm going to go down and paste that in. And I'm going to change the name of this method. We're going to test that the request fails with a blacklisted IP. Now, in order to make this fail, we need to have the same IP address in the remote address that the client is using as the one that's in the band IP list. So let's paste that in here. So the client is sending a request with an IP address that is part of the band list. Now I want to run this test and we expect this to fail because this should not return an HTTP status of OK. And that's because it should return that permission denied error. So what I'm going to do is run the test command. And this time we see that we get a failure. We've run three tests, but this new test here has failed. Now let's change what's expected here in the self.assert equal statement. Instead of an OK response, we're going to change that to something else. And that's going to be the 403 response which stands for forbidden. So the client is forbidden from sending that request because their IP address is in the band list. Let's clear the terminal again at the bottom and we're going to run python manage.py test. And this time all three tests are passing. So that's an example of how you might want to test the logic of a middleware class in Django. We have a simple class here that contains a setup method and three different tests for different variations of that functionality. Now I want to finish with one last example. We've used HTMX a lot in this channel, so what I'm going to do is create a middleware that's going to detect whether a request is coming from HTMX. Now let's call the file HTMX middleware.py 
And just to speed things up, I'm going to paste the skeleton of this middleware. We have the dunder init method and the dunder call method. And what we want to do here is in a very basic way, replicate the functionality of the Django HTMX package. And that package contains a middleware class that detects whether an incoming request has originated from HTMX. Now there's a fairly simple way to do this. I'm going to go to the HTMX documentation and we're gonna look at the request headers that HTMX sends. And what it always sends is an HX request header. So if you have a request coming in and it contains a header called HX request, and that's set to true, that means that the request has been sent by HTMX on your client. So what we need to do in our middleware is look for a header with this particular name. So let's go back to the class and I'm gonna store that in a variable in the dunder call method. So let's create a variable called HTMX header and set that to HX request. And we're now going to check if that header is present on the incoming request. So let's create a variable here called header and we're gonna check request.headers and we can use .get to see if our HTMX header is present in the incoming headers. And if we do have an HX request, the value of that header is going to be stored in the variable called header. If we don't, we want to use the or statement here and just set that to a default of none. And on the following line, we can check what the header is. We can check if it's set to a value, for example, if it's not none. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a property on the request and that's the .htmx property. And what we're gonna do is look at the header that we have got back here from the incoming request. And we're gonna check if that's equal to true. So two equal signs here, and we're checking if the value of the HX request header is set to true, and that matches what we saw here in the documentation. And that's going to return a Boolean, so it's gonna be true if the header is equal to true, and it's gonna be false otherwise. And what this is gonna do is set the .htmx property on the request object that's going to be passed into our Django view. And that will be set to true or false, and we can therefore check in the Django view and conditionally perform some actions, for example, return a different template based on whether or not that's true or false. Now, if we don't have a header, we know for a fact that this is not came from HTMX. So we can set request.htmx to false in that case. So the purpose of this middleware is to modify the incoming request before it goes to the Django view. And that allows the Django view to simply check whether or not the request has originated from HTMX. And none of your individual Django views need to worry about this logic because it's been centralized and handled in a middleware class. So now that we've written the middleware, we can go to settings.py and I'm gonna scroll up to the middleware setting here. And what we're gonna do is again, we're gonna define the middleware path here. So it's gonna be core.middleware and the class was in a file called HTMX middleware. And if we go back to that file, we can copy the name of the class and paste that in here. So we now have a reference to the middleware and Django's gonna use that on every incoming request. What we can do now is go to views.py and because the middleware has amended the request, we can actually print out the request.htmx property. And because we're not using HTMX in this application, we expect this to be false for now. Let's start the Django server and we're gonna to go to localhost 8000 and we're gonna refresh this page. Now we're currently getting 403 forbidden. What I'm gonna do is go back to settings.py and I'm gonna disable this setting. I'm gonna remove it from the Django settings. And then when we go back here, we can actually send that request. And now we can go back to the terminal that we have and we can see we have a printout here of false that's coming from this print statement. So this is not an HTMX request, it's printing out false here. But the important thing is that the middleware has added this property and we can then check the property in the Django view. Now the last thing to do in this video is we're going to go to HTMX and we're actually going to install this. And it's very simple to install. I'll leave a link to this page below the video. We copy the script tag from the CDN and we can go back to Django and go to the template here. So it's in the templates base.html and we're going to paste that script tag into the head element and that's gonna allow us to use HTMX attributes in this project. Once we've done that, I'm gonna add some very simple HTMX directives. We're gonna to go to index.html and let's add a few of these now. So we're gonna send an HX get request, so a get request originating from HTMX to the index URL in this application. And because this is on a paragraph tag, we need some kind of trigger to send this request. So I'm gonna add an HX trigger and we're gonna set that to click. And this is just an example. We probably wouldn't do something like this in a real application. But what we want to do here is just send an HTMX request. And we're gonna use the index URL, which is the one that we've got defined in this application. And that maps to this view here. And we're gonna print out whether or not the request originates from HTMX. Now beforehand, that was set to false. 
So what I'm going to do now is save all of the files that we've edited and go back to the application and refresh the page. Now this is the paragraph here. If we actually click that, we can see that something has happened. We've got back some kind of response that's been appended to the document. But if we go back to VS Code here, we can see that the property for request.htmx is now set to true. And that's because our middleware has detected that htmx is sending this request. How has it done that? Let's go to the class. What it's done is it's extracted the hx request from the HTTP headers, and that particular header is added by HTMX. That's been extracted here on line seven, and then when we check what that header is, we see that it's set to true, and we're gonna set the value request.htmx to true in that case. So I hope that logic makes sense, and that's gonna be the last thing we do in this video. If you're interested in more content like this about middleware and other features in Django, let me know in the comments. And like I said at the start of the video, if we go to settings.py, if you want to know more about what these default built-in middleware classes are doing in Django, also let me know in the comments. We can maybe do some videos on some of these. Thanks again for watching. If you've enjoyed the content, give the video a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the channel for much more. And you can also buy the channel a coffee if you're enjoying this content. There's a link for that in the description. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.